Hey guys, today we're here to talk about Hero Sync. This is a game that we've been working on for a few years now, and we're finally ready to publish the Alpha Client live to everyone else. As you can see here, we have a login screen. This is the first place you'll arrive. When you open the demo, you simply type in your username, you type in your password, you can have it remember you or not, but you're going to want to click register first. Just a username, a password, and an email, and you're not even going to have to confirm your email for the sake of this demo. Once you've typed in your username and password, you simply click login and you'll have access to the game room. You click on the game room and pick one of the five character decks and you will see a join game or watch a game option. So we will click join a game and then you have rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. So you'll see your opponent's character here and your character down here. This is your life total, which we call influence. You get 400 and your opponent gets 400. I'm just gonna pick paper, so did he. Oh, giddy. Ta-da, he beat me. So, this is where you'll first meet our blob mascot. He's gonna be in the artwork of most of the cards. Um, so, it looks like he chose to have me go first, and that's fine. So the first thing you're gonna do is choose a card. You get to pick any card in your deck and add it to your hand. So I'm going to pick Traveling Merchant. Then you have your abilities. So both players start the game at level 1. And you pick one of your level 1 abilities. By hovering your mouse over the ability, you'll be able to see down here what it does. Passive means that it applies at all times. Active means you have to choose to use it. So let's pick Divine Courage. When a follower I control with a lower level attacks a follower with a higher level, my follower gains 20 power during that battle. That's pretty good. And now I draw the rest of my hand, so does he, and I've gone first. You have your dice button, your coin button, your token button, and your counter button for if you need to keep track of things. You type a number in here to increase or decrease your influence total, and this button ends your turn. So by hovering over a card, you get some options. Uh, we'll start with our friend the Traveling Merchant. We can reveal him, put him to the deck, set him face down, send him to the Fallen area, which some Yu-Gi-Oh players would know as the Graveyard, and of course, play. So, he has an ability here. You'll notice there's quite a lot of details. The 1 is first that that is his level. The 10 is his power. Power is what he uses for the sake of combat. And this star is his allegiance. He is not allied to any particular hero, so both my opponent and I can use the card Traveling Merchant. Elvish Infuser is aligned to my hero. Only Becca, the Golden Knight, can use Elvish Infuser. So, he is a follower card. These are similar to your monsters, your minions, whatever you want to call them. And he has an advance effect. Advance effects trigger when he comes into play. And he says, he, I can discard a card to search my deck for another level 1 card and add it to my hand. But I lose 10 influence if I use that ability. So let's use that ability. Let's just discard uh, Elvish Infuser. And by going over to our deck, we can click on View. And we can find a level 1 card and place it in our hand. And I think I want... Local Militia. That's a good card. Let's put that in our hand. And then I lose 10 influence. Pretty simple. I went first, so I can't attack. So I end my turn. You're probably wondering about things like what the levels mean, and we'll get to that in a minute. I can't play this card. He's level 3. I can't play this card. It's level 2. So let's see what our friend Dechen here is going to do with his first turn. It looks like he's going to play the Public Enforcer. That has a power of 30, much larger than my 10. And he's going to prepare a counter in his back row. So prepare is similar to setting. Uh, counters can be prepared no matter what level they are, but he can't activate it until he's the appropriate level. So he's attacked me for 30, and that is stronger than my 10. This means that my guy is destroyed, he goes to the Fallen area, but the 10 that gets done back to his Public Enforcer doesn't decrease this 30 down to 20. They don't have like health that you diminish, he's just still 30. 
and because he was stronger than mine, I lose influence. The amount you lose is equal to the level of your follower times 10, so I take 10 damage. If he were to attack me directly, I would take the full 30, but 30 over 10 does not do 20 damage. Now that he's ended his turn, we've both had a turn at level 1, each player is now level 2. So now I get to pick one of these level 2 abilities. I can't ever use Scout the Enemy, no matter how hard I try, because I've picked Divine Courage as my level 1 ability for this match. So at level 2, I have three different choices, and I think I'm going to go with Surpass Limitation. It says target level 3 or lower follower you control, and it increases its power by 30. It can't attack heroes though, it means I can't attack directly, and the changes last until the follower dies, so it can never attack directly once I've chosen that. So we have to be very careful with this ability. So we're going to pick Surpass Limitation just to show some examples of using active abilities. And he took Poison Dart, so if I click on him I can see which abilities he's chosen as well. Poison Dart means that as an active ability he can use it once per turn and shoot me for 20 damage. And he chose Lethal Poison Beta, so at the end of each of my turns I lose 10 influence. I didn't lose 10 influence earlier uh, from that, so I'm going to do that now and start my turn. So now I'm level 2, I can play level 2 cards. If I control at least 2 level 2 or lower followers, I can look at all my opponent's counter cards and destroy one of them. So that's pretty good. So let's try and do that. Let's play Local Militia and let's play Fire Thrower, but I got to make sure he doesn't have a response. And he does, Blood Boil. When I play one or more followers at the same time, I take, he deals 20 damage to me, then forces my local militia to attack. There are no phases. You can summon, attack, summon, attack, attack, summon, attack. Everything can attack once per turn, and you have no limit on how many summons you can do. So I just lost 10 more. He's doing super good here. And now I'm not going to be able to control two things, but I also don't have a counter to worry about anymore. So I can play Fire Thrower. When it attacks or is attacked, it deals 10 damage. And I can use Chosen One. Target follower gains 10 power, and if it kills a follower, I search my deck for a card with the same name as this card and put it into play. Chosen one on Fire Thrower. That's going to give him 10 power. So we put the little counter on him, marks that now he's 20. And I can use Surpass Limitation. Target a level 3 or lower follower and increase its power by 30. Surpass Limitation. And I'm going to attack his Public Enforcer because now I'm at 50. And because it attacks, it'll deal 10 damage, and because his public enforcer dies, it'll deal 10 more. And because chosen one, I get to search my deck for another fire thrower. But it can't attack this turn. And is this, when do I lose the 30? The 30 for surpass is permanent. I'm just double checking. I don't want to make any mistakes here. Switch deck for Yep, yeah, it looks like I'm just sticking at 50 with Fire Thrower here, so now it's Dylan's turn. What does Heal Venom mean? So, Heal Venom would be his level 4 ability that says no hero can gain influence for the rest of the game. Lethal Poison Beta. He's correct. I take 10 damage. Poison Dart shoots me for 20 more. That's his level 2 ability. You can use your abilities once per your own turn, but if they're passive, they just happen when they happen. They're essentially continuously applying abilities. And it looks like he's using Red Tide Toxin. Choose one. Kill a target level 1 follower, which it looks like is his choice, or target level 3 or lower follower loses 20 power, 
Or target one follower. Your opponent can't play another one with the same name. Target to kill. So, to the Fallen area, and I take 10 more, because I lost a level 1 follower. You always lose influence if your followers die, but only if your followers die. He doesn't have to lose 20 for using the Red Tide Toxin. And this is the Apprentice Assassin. When it kills a follower, he draws a card. So he loses 10, and I lose 10 on the Fire Thrower. Grave Plunderer. That's going to attack me directly. I'm going to lose 30. And he's ended his turn, so we're going to level 3. If I control two followers, both with different levels, I can draw a card. Or, followers can't be forced to attack. He doesn't have any cards that do that except for Blood Boil, which he did just possibly set, so I should probably take this. Or, level 1 and 2 followers gain 20 power, and level 3s gain 10. I think I'm going to take defensive formation, so that he can't use that blood boil on me. And he took bio sample. At the end of each turn, if you kill two or more followers this turn, draw two cards. Rough. Alrighty. So, now I'm level 3. It means I can finally play my Grand Gladiator. If it kills an opponent's follower, I can sacrifice it to play a Spartalos Champion of the Arena from my deck. That's the good stuff. It's one of the most powerful combos in this deck. So we're going to have Spartalos, and this thing's a bit of a bigger threat, so let's take care of that. So he should take 20, because he lost a level 2, and when I sacrifice this, I will take 30, because I lost a level 3. And that's going to summon Spartalos, the champion of the arena from my deck. And Spartalos says, if he's played by the effect of Grand Gladiator, I play a Fallen Gladiator and a Grand Gladiator from my deck. But they can't attack directly this turn. So Fallen Gladiator. And Grand Gladiator. They can't attack directly, but they can still attack opponent's creatures. So let's take care of that Apprentice Assassin. And he'll take 10 more, and this guy can attack directly for 90. And that'll be my turn. And I take 10 for Lethal Poison Beta. And I take 20 for the Poison Dart. I'm half dead. He's at 250, but I'm the one with control of the board. We'll see if he has an answer to Spartalos, or it might be over next turn. He's got Cobra, Grave Plunder, and Grand Gladiator. So I'm not going to be able to attack him directly, that's for sure. But because this gives my followers 30 power, even Fallen Gladiators on 70, I think, I think I've got him pretty walled up. If he had taken Lethal Poison Alpha, he could have taken 10 power off my guy and dropped it down to 60, at which point he could trade it with Grand Gladiator and take it out. Alrighty, so now we get to pick level 4 abilities, and this is where power becomes 
pretty absurd. Uh, I can either add a level 1 or 2 card from my deck to my hand, and of course I still have Surpass Limitation, I can use these abilities again this turn, or I can heal 100 influence and draw 3 cards, or I can make it so that I draw until I have 3 cards in my hand and I can't be forced to discard cards for the rest of the game, and block him into only 1 draw per turn, but we're going to pick all warmed up. So, that heals 100 influence and draws 3 cards. He took Toxic Cloud, so on his turn, he's going to be able to make all my followers lose 30 power, but he won't be able to summon level 4 followers for the rest of the turn. Together as one. If I control a level 1, 2, and 3, I draw 3 cards. Unfortunately, I control a 2, 3, and 4. And this one is for controlling at least 2 level 2 or lower followers. I've got some early game cards that I'm not getting any use out of. And the rest of these are followers, which I obviously can't play as my board is full. So I guess we're just going right into combat. And I don't want to risk that his counter can increase the power of his dudes. So I don't want to like barely be 10 stronger. So let's start with some easy trades. Like this one. And then this guy's on 50. And this guy's on 70, so we'll go for that one. And there it is. Target that follower, it loses 20 power. So, we're both on 50. This means we both die. And we'll I'll lose 20, and he'll lose 30, as his card was level 3. So that was still a pretty good trade for me. And then now, this is definitely a free attack. To do 30 more to him. Now this is where it gets really cool. I can summon a follower and attack now. All followers I control gain 10 power as long as this guy's in play, so I can buff up my other two guys a little bit. Or, I could play the Traveling Merchant and discard a card I'm not going to get to use in order to search for one I will. Or, I can just replace my Lost Fallen Gladiator. I think I'm going to do that, because this one's the most damage. This is just a clean 70 right to the face. And, that makes it Dylan's turn. Poison Beta. Yes, I did. I forgot the Poison Beta. I'm always forgetting the Poison Beta. The final game will be automated. You won't be allowed to forget Poison Beta, but we'll get there. This is a nice how to play little demo client that I've made for you guys so that you can experience the game as we move along. Another 20 from Poison Dart. I'm starting to be really glad I healed 100 influence. Can his cards stop the mighty Spartalos? He does have Toxic Cloud. And he would have been able to use Lethal Poison Alpha again. So Toxic Cloud is going to sap all my guys by 30. So, this guy's back to 60, this guy's back to 40, and this guy's only on 60. So that should be enough to finish him off. But we'll see. So I can't use my level 4 ability again, because I chose all warmed up, and it only happens once. I can surpass limitation, but then I can't attack directly. So, none of my abilities are really doing much for me right now. I think what I do is just go for it. Swing for the 60. These two together would be enough. These two together would not.
Do I have him? He's thinking hard. Attack. This is the one that's actually giving them boosts. I shouldn't attack with this guy first, but... Hello? Oh, there we go. And 40. Is that the match? We also have our Discord server, so if you guys have any questions, you're always able to ask them in there. We have some rulings experts if there's any disputes on how to resolve any effects, and a nice big rule book as part of the post as well. Looks like I win. It was a nice clean victory for Becca over Tutarik. And there's the rematch button, and of course you can also view replays to go back over how you did, and then the quit button. This would allow you to come and look at your game records where you can see your replay as well and look at the log. And of course you can watch some other people playing. So it looks like we have Vantus Bloom here exploring the Mika deck on his own time, his or her own time. They're in a little solo mode game there. So that's the Hero Sync demo. If you guys have any other questions, do please join our Discord server. We'd love to hear them. We're always looking for feedback and we just want to let you guys play as many games as you can. You don't have access to the deck constructor because these are just some starter decks, but I promise you the decks are all very, very well tuned together. The texts are constantly being updated to make them more and more clear. And there is five perfectly great heroes for you to come and check out. I really would love to see what you guys think. Thanks for checking out this video and have a wonderful weekend.